Hello, this is going to be a video on perfumes that feature a prominent tomato leaf note. Tomato leaf is one of my favorite notes in perfume. It offers a zesty, uh, leafy, leafy, green, piquant, kind of spicy, energizing uh, sort of smell. Uh, it's like evocative of nature, but at the same time, it can smell very clean, which uh, I'll talk about when I uh, discuss certain fragrances. But it's a really wonderful herbal green note that you should look into if you haven't yet uh, tried any perfumes that contain tomato leaf. So I have a few bottles here, and I have some samples uh, that also feature tomato leaf. I'll think about whether or not I want to talk about that as I do the video. So let's start off with the first tomato leaf perfume that I've ever tried. Uh, well, that's not necessarily true, but that I owned. That is this one right here, Donna Karen, New York Women. And I think this is a discontinued perfume. Uh, on Fragrantica, it says that it was released in 1999, and it contains notes of tomato leaf, orange, mandarin orange, apricot. In the top, it has cassis, water lily, yellow water lily, yellow narcissus, jasmine, heliotrope, lang ylang, orchid, and rose in the mid and in the base it has birch suede sandalwood patchouli and amber okay so this is my bottle it's a tester bottle this one is very interesting okay all right so as usual i've sprayed it on um, a blotter to remind myself so what i get with this perfume you know what I think the notes, okay, the notes I think are wrong now that I think about it because this perfume, what makes it very unique is it contains a, I think it's a vodka note. So I don't know uh, what's going on with the page that I, the Fragrantica page, but anyways, what I get from this perfume, it's a very addictive, uh, I want to say laundry musk type of perfume it has so much texture to it it has that uh hot towel sort of smell it's really interesting um but the tomato leaf i can see the tomato leaf working its magic in this perfume by amping up that um laundry fresh smell uh, as I mentioned earlier, tomato leaf can kind of give, there's something about it that lends itself to, um, cleanliness. The way the perfumer uses it, it can sort of offer a clean aspect to it. And that's what I get from it in this perfume. I can also kind of get a green herbal aspect from this perfume, but I get this really addictive, clean laundry musk. Uh, and this fragrance and I've seen other people talk about uh, getting grapefruit or getting the orange note in this but I don't really get that so much um, to me it's just this slightly floral slightly herbal uh, laundry musk uh, type of fragrance if you work in a setting that uh, has strict rules on perfume or you want to go for a uh, very clean, put together, fresh uh, vibe, this would be perfect for that. It is so clean. I don't know how you can get any cleaner than this without becoming uh, cloying. And uh, I should probably also mention that... Um, I would go light on the sprays with this perfume because too many sprays and I think this could become cloying, but uh, if you're mild to moderate 
you'll get this very elegant, clean aura around you. Um, so yeah, that's a great one. And it has, um, I think, really good performance. So that's Donna Care New York Women. Forget what I said earlier about the note breakdown, because I think that that is wrong. The, somebody edited the um, Fragrantica page, and I think it's wrong. So forget that. Okay, so Donna Care New York Women. Um, the next one I'm going to talk about is one I've talked about in a different uh, video. And it is uh, Un Jardin Sur le Nil from Hermes. This perfume came out in uh, 2005 by Jean-Claude Elena, and it has grapefruit, green mango, tomato, and carrot in the top, lotus, bulrush, orange, hyacinth, and peony in the middle, musk, iris, incense, labdanum, and uh, cinnamon in the base. I always have to mention that the bottle, I think, is really gorgeous, and... The ombre turquoise effect is really uh, perfect for how this perfume smells. So, this perfume, get a spray. Okay. This perfume, this is a light green, um, bittersweet, fruity herbal watery kind of perfume. Like I said, the color really is uh, accurate to the way this smells. It's a very watery, airy, uh, green mango. I'm definitely getting that green mango in here. And then the tomato leaf gives a bit of an herbal tinge in this fragrance, a bit of a fuzzy herbal green tinge um it's not the main star i don't think but i can see how it um has lended itself to how this perfume smells it's a little bit floral too um but it's very very watery kind of green and grassy if you think of um i mean the translation of the name means garden uh, on the nile i think in french so just think of the Nile River at dusk, and think about the green, like papyrus plants that are along the river bank, and maybe there's like a little um, area where there's water lotus floating around, and um, it's kind of like that. Um, very clean as well. All of these perfumes, in my opinion, are very clean, but this is clean without um, sacrificing uh, some uh, fruitiness on account of the mango and the um, grapefruit. So yeah, and it's also very zesty in my opinion. Um, moderate performance, some people get um, really huge performance from this, um, but extremely elegant and this is a perfume where people will a lot of people hunt other people down <laughs> when they are wearing this perfume it is unique and kind of strange um it really stands apart from other fragrances in my opinion um but yeah a uh, kind of fruity airy watery green uh, scent with um, tomato leaf. Okay. The next one I'm going to talk about is right here. This is Lombardon Low from Detique. This is the Eau de Parfum version. Okay. Lombardon Low. I think this might be the oldest. Well, the um, this one right here. The Eau de Parfum was launched in 2012, but the um, Eau de Toilette came out in, I think, the 80s. I think it was, like, Diptyque's first fragrance. And um, it's also, or it was the signature scent of, what's her name? Lauren Bacall. That's what I read. So, for this perfume... 
okay, thanks a lot for your answer because you're not telling me the notes. So I'll go to the Eau de Toilette page instead. All right. So the notes in this perfume are Cassis, Rose, Black Currant, Leaf, Black Currant, Berry, Bergamot, Ambergris, Musk, and Mandarin Orange. So this one, you know, each of these perfumes are so addicting. And I really think it's that tomato leaf. It gives that like, like punchy, um, green, uh, punchy greenness. Um, so, number down low. This is primarily a tomato leaf and rose perfume, but the uh, cassis in the perfume it gives this very juicy, um, tangy aspect to this perfume. And uh, the rose, it comes across like a, I feel like it's the neon. It's like radiating off of whatever this perfume radiates in kind of like a neon way um, off of your clothes, off of your skin. It's like the rose is like a bright, bright, glowing reddish pink. That's how I see it. And then that tomato leaf, it cuts down on the um, juicy fruitiness of the black currant and um, kind of tames that back and uh, just offers this darker green herbal quality to it. Um, so all of these, you have that, you know, the juicy uh, black currant, you have that glowing bright red rose, and then you have the bitter greenness of the tomato leaf. The three of them together synergistically work so well, um, and it feels incredibly addicting, for me at least. Uh, I love wearing this perfume. It just makes you feel like, just makes you feel like you're draped in plants and flowers. Um, is it more floral or is it more green? Um, honestly, that depends a lot on the person because if you read the reviews, some people emphasize how green it comes across to them. Some people say it's all about the rose or they don't even pick up rose at all. Um, for me, I find this to be, uh, more about the, uh, tomato leaf, but I definitely pick out the rose in this. So if you like rose and you like the green parts of the rose experience, definitely look into this one. Um, and honestly, I feel like most age groups would find this interesting to wear. I could see very young people picking up on that uh, fruity cassis uh, and uh, enjoying that a lot. And um, I can see an older audience enjoying this too because it has sort of like a bitterness. It's not that juvenile. Um, it's a really great perfume with really uh, strong performance as well in the uh, Eau de Parfum concentration. Lombardon Low. The next one is a very new addition to my collection. And that is uh, Vetiver Ecarla from L'Artisan Parfumer. I've never tried any, actually I have very recently. But uh, this brand is very new to me. I've known about it, but I haven't tried anything from them in the past. It comes in this heavy, heavy glass bottle, and the liquid is an orangey red color. I'm gonna give this a spray. first tell you the notes so this came out i think in this is from 2022 so this is like a year old uh maybe not even maybe a little bit under a year okay so this 
contains three notes. It contains tomato leaf, grapefruit, and vetiver. Okay, giving it a smell. So this perfume, like I said about the other ones, is also very um, unique. It takes, okay, so grapefruit and vetiver, those together have a lot of similarities. Um, the aroma chemicals used to make a grapefruit note and used to make a vetiver note, um, quite a few of them have some overlap in their um, and they're like aroma. Uh, it's sort of a um, musky cannabis rhubarb like quality that they share. And rhubarb is another note that I think is amazing. So at some point I'll talk about that in a different video. But uh, this contains that cannabis green rhubarb, uh, watery, crisp kind of smell. And that tomato leaf fits in perfectly because it offers that bitter greenness. Uh, so it's a very, if you like that bitter herbal green, uh, zesty quality of tomato leaf, this is very nice. I can't get enough of this perfume. Um, and I think it's really cool that they took a note like grapefruit, which often is done in a very juicy kind of way or uh in certain perfumes like i don't know uh can't think of it right now but sometimes they make it way too bitter and dry so you don't get the really nice grapefruit payoff but in this one you get that um it is kind of like a bitter grapefruit but it's bitter and um it's fragrant you do get some of this uh fruitiness from it but it's that uh very specific rhubarb uh, kind of fruitiness that isn't very sweet. It's crisp and um, has like a crisp, watery juiciness, but it's not uh, very sweet at all. So if you like grapefruit and you like perfumes that are not very sweet, which I do not like perfumes that are very sweet, and I'm perfectly fine wearing a perfume that has no sweetness at all, then um, this is an excellent choice. Uh, I think the color suits it very well because while it is green and bitter, it does have that rhubarb kind of um, quality. And the color, as you can see, is uh, it's sort of like that, uh, the color of rhubarb, um, which is green and at the same time uh, has sort of like a reddish uh, color to it. Um, so this is really really nice and um the performance on this is excellent if you go online and read reviews you'll see many other people have the same experience so for me this was a must-have because it has good like a good wearing experience it doesn't vanish quickly and i'm getting a long-lasting grapefruit which is kind of hard it's very hard to come by so this is a beautiful, beautiful perfume that features uh, a, uh, a prominent tomato leaf note. And then the last bottle that I'm going to talk about in this perfume video, well, in this perfume video is uh, this one right here. This is What About Adam by the brand Yoop. This is my, I think this is the newest perfume in my uh, perfume collection. Okay, so this perfume, this perfume came out in 1992 and it features in the top tomato leaf, grapefruit, mint, cassis, and lemon. In the middle, it contains lavender, geranium, sandalwood, and cedar. And then in the base, it contains vanilla, oak moss, vetiver, and lab denim. 
give it a spray. And I think the bottle is so interesting. I love that like uh, curved, the curvature of it in the middle and then the matte, it's shiny, but it's matte on the lid. Okay, so this perfume, extremely green. It's very green and it is also very, uh, <laughs> It's very, there's something about it that's very, like, gentlemanly in a more old-fashioned way. But, in the opening of this perfume, you get that, but it's also combined with this very clean, very, very, like, shower-fresh, minty clean. And this does contain mint, so that makes sense. And it has the geranium, which can kind of have a minty quality. A very clean mintiness to it, which lifts the uh, gentlemanly aspect of this perfume, which I think is coming from, you know, the majority of the base notes, the vanilla, the labdanum, and the lavender. Uh, it lifts that and makes this a much more exciting wear experience um, in the beginning. You smell extremely clean and sophisticated, I would say, when you're wearing this. Um, and that cleanliness is uh, very addictive. And I will take whiffs of my arm or, or my shirt because I just want to, like, nuzzle in that smell. The one thing, though, is that eventually that does wear off and you're left with a, uh, the more gentlemanly um, side of this perfume, which is, you still get that tomato leaf, but it is the lavender and that vanilla definitely creeps out more and the labdanum uh, becomes stronger and labdanum is a little bit sweet. So, you know, with um, like traditional men's fougere fragrances, how it can have that uh, sweetness to it. This has that kind of sweetness to it. And, you know, I'm thinking of a perfume, for example, like Beau Du Jour from uh, Tom Ford. Like that, for example, has that kind of gentlemanly, sweet fougere quality. And I mean, well, that is that perfume is all about that. But this contains uh, a bit of that. Um, and it turns into, um, that is the primary scent for the majority of the wear, which is unfortunate because I really like that clean, uh, the clean smell in the beginning. I really wish it stayed that way. A lot of people say this perfume is like a beast on them. I don't find that to be true for myself. Um, I'm, I'll say that I don't like spray myself down with lots and lots of sprays. So, um, so far I've only done probably like five or six sprays of this on myself, uh, and that includes on my clothes, uh, and I'll get like a moderate wear with soft projection, uh, but quite a few people say that this is a, like a beast on them. So, not in my experience, but maybe I'm not using enough sprays, maybe it's just me, um, so... A very nice fragrance but I just uh, I really wish that green clean aspect it has in the beginning I really wish that it uh, stayed for the duration of the of the wear okay so that was what about Adam and I have this bag of <laughs> samples so maybe I'll just like talk about them too. I thought it would be nice to have a more streamlined video where I just talked about the bottles, but I mean, oh well. Okay, so this is a sample of Eau de Campagne, Eau de, Campa uh, Eau de Campagne from uh, Sicily. And this is, I think, one of the first fragrances that Jean-Claude Elena ever made. I think it's from the 70s or late 60s. Very old. 
This is like a cornerstone tomato leaf fragrance. And this fish spray. I really love it. So Eau de Campagne, it has for sure a more older sensibility to it. Uh, and it's like unapologetic green herbal nature, the way, you know, back in the 70s and part of the 80s, uh, those green herbal kind of scents uh, were very popular. And this is definitely a part of that family, the green aromatic. And you're getting a very strong tomato leaf in this one, maybe the most literal tomato leaf in all the perfumes that I'm talking about with you today. Uh, it's very refreshing, uh, very chic. It's, it, it is that green herbal uh, quality that has no sweetness that is so chic to me. And um, very evocative of a time that we're no lo longer living in. Uh, so, and I, I think the bottle of this is really pretty too. It's a long cylindrical bottle with the... Um, Sicily logo on it, uh, especially the vintage bottles, I think are really beautiful. So if you like a very refreshing, green kind of throwback fragrance that features tomato leaf, Eau de Campagne from Sicily is an excellent choice. Okay. And then we have, I don't have the uh, sample bottle, but I have the, um, like the booklet it came in. Um, this is in New York. Uh, okay, this was, it's supposed to say chef's table, but um, it doesn't. So, uh, yes, so I tried this. You know what? Okay, so now that I'm seeing that the name... Hmm. The name is wrong, so now I'm second-guessing myself if I even got... I ordered this from, like, you know, online or something from somebody. And now I'm wondering if I even got the right fragrance. Unless they put uh, Chef's Table inside of this by mistake. I don't know. So, I was going to talk about this, but I don't think I should. Because um, this was supposed to be Chef's Table, which is another very popular... Uh, tomato leaf fragrance, but I don't think I'm going to talk about this because I might have gotten the wrong one. So, sorry. I'm not going to talk about that. Um, the next one is... Hmm, okay. Corsica Furiosa from uh, Parfumed Empire. This one... So this one is also a very green herbal kind of smell, and it has a uh, like a hay-like quality to it. Um, not very sweet, green, light, fresh, airy. Um, yeah, a green, light, fresh and airy herbal sort of uh, tomato leaf fragrance. I'm not getting the tomato leaf uh, like super strongly in this. I'm, I'm getting a lot of different kind of green notes, but I, I can definitely see, I can like see its presence in this one. That was uh, Corsica Furiosa. And my next, I guess we'll, this will be the last one. I do have a, um, it's a sample, this is a sample of, um, DSH Perfumes Summer Cologne, I think it's Dawn Spencer Horowitz is the perfumer, I think she's based out of Colorado, um, but this sample, I'm pretty sure that it's turned, and, uh, so I don't want to talk about it, but, it, um, before it turned, it was very, this was an amazing green, like a garden, like a gardeny green 
tomato leaf fragrance. So if you're after that, like, um, you know, you're a gardener and you have your patch of vegetables and you have your tomato leaves or you have your tomatoes and, um, and the sun is shining and you grab onto the tomato leaves and then crush it between your fingers and smell it in your hand. This is that kind of fragrance. Super, super green, almost savory, zero sweetness in this. Um, so if you like green herbal fragrances, Summer Cologne from uh, DSH Perfumes is very nice. Okay, and then the last little sample that I have is um, Wax Poetic. It's called Flight. This one, this one is kind of, it has a very strong suede-like note in it. It might not, I don't think it has suede in it, but what that's what I'm picking up on. It's very suede -y, almost like kind of leathery. Um, not sweet at all. Not picking up on a very strong uh, tomato leaf note in this one. Hmm. Yeah. But it is an, a fragrance that has... Uh, I think people have said it's a very um, tomato leafy fragrance. I don't get that. I'm getting mostly like a, like a suede and nothing else from this. So that's Flight from uh, Wax Poetic. All right. I don't know why I even went into the, went to the trouble to discuss those samples. It might not have been a very good description of any of them, but whatever. So anyhow, these are the tomato leaf fragrances that I wanted to talk about. Um, if you want to go for the mo most, the cleanest smelling out of all of them, probably would be this one, the Donna Karen. Or if you want to uh, do one that's very clean, but has more of like a traditionally masculine edge, even though completely unisex a woman could wear this, maybe this one here. And this also has the mint in it. Um, so, the, you know, and it, like I said, it's not all about the greenness. It does uh, transform a bit and the vanilla and the lavender um, and the labdanum come out. It makes it more of a traditional kind of perfume experience. So there's that. Um, if you're a grapefruit lover and you also love tomato leaf, this one, amazing. Um, maybe the most fruity on Jardin sur la Nil. Fruity, airy. I mean, they're all pretty airy, but this is very fruity, airy, watery. And then the most floral would be this one on account of the rose. Um, but this is also arguably the most fruity because of that very juicy and tangy cassis note it has. Okay, so there you go. Those are the perfumes that feature a very strong tomato leaf note. Um... Let me know your thoughts if you have any. I hope you enjoyed this video and have a great rest of your day. Bye.